Welcome back. In the last video, we looked at dealing with destruction of um, bullet objects and monsters on collisions. So making sure that bullets couldn't pass through walls and making sure that bullets and monsters were destroyed when they collided with each other. So what we're going to look at today is, a little, is collision in a little bit more detail. And we're going to look at something called collision masks. And collision masks are something that are things that are used or a, a, a parameter that's set that um, allows uh, objects to pass each other closely without colliding. So the easiest way to demonstrate that is to show you what I'm talking about. So if I do that by look opening up my sprites. So when we're talking about collision masks, we're talking about the sprites. Okay, so I'm going to open up the monster sprite and my player sprite. So I've got two sprites that are open and I'm going to zoom out so you can see both of them on the screen. Okay, whoops, didn't want to do that. Um, so when we're talking about um, sprites then, when we're talking about collisions, if I walk past a monster, okay, and the, mon the monster touches me where my mouse is here, currently that will uh, mark or that will uh, identify a collision, okay? because the masks that are set on the objects, the collision masks that are set on the objects are rectangles. So let me just um, zoom in on, on this one so you can see what I'm talking about. So just looking at this one here, if I show it full screen. So that box that runs around the outside of the um, object currently, that is the collision mask. So if my monster touches me here, even though it's not touching the actual character, it will identify a collision and I will lose a life. So what I want to do really is to um, change that mask to make it a bit more um, forgiving if I walk past an object or if a monster comes close to me. So to do that, I've got an option here called collision mask. So I'm looking here, okay. If I drop down the arrow on collision mask, you can see that black box there that comes up around the object, okay. That is the current collision mask. And it's an automatic uh, collision mask set currently to a rectangle. Now I can drop down a list here and I can choose to have an ellipse, which actually is a lot better. Okay, so you can see that my collisions now have to fall within this circle in order to register as a collision and not on the outside as it was like that. Okay, so it's a bit more tolerant. And what you usually find is that in games, the player object's collision masks are made considerably smaller to allow you to have a bit more um, tolerance. So uh, if you make a mistake, uh, it's not instantly punished with death. Okay, so um, if I was to go on back onto the ellipse, because I think that's a really good uh, mask actually, um, if I change that to a manual mask, okay, like that, you'll see I get little handles here, and I can drag in my collision mask so I can change the size of my collision mask. So let's say, for example, I wanted to make sure that if um, I can move it about, if somebody hits me there, okay, so I've got a tolerance around the outside of my object. If somebody hits me there um, on this circle, then that will register a collision. Otherwise it won't. So it's important that you go through and look at your collision mask settings. And it's important um, that you demonstrate that you've done that as well when you do your uh, control assessment. So that's my, my collision mask for my player object, so I'm happy with that. Let's go and have a look then at uh, the collision mask for my monster. So let's zoom in on that, and let's go on to collision mask. And you can see I've got a rectangle there as well. Um, now, I may decide, let's see what the, the ellipse is like. Now the ellipse looks better again. So um, I'm going to change it to a manual. I'm gonna make this, this circle a little bit bigger so it covers more of the object. Let's zoom out just a little bit so as I can see where my mask is going. Okay, so I'm making it a little bit bigger. Okay, let's drag it down on this side. Okay, so I've got a little bit outside of the box there. Let's just make that a little bit smaller so it's inside the box. There we go. So now I've changed the collision mask on both my player object and my uh, my monster object. 
Okay, I don't think the uh, the bullet needs to be changed because the collision mask on there, I believe, is the full image. So um, let's just double check that. Let's go into a manual collision mask, and it is the full image. So that's absolutely fine. We don't need to make that any bigger. Okay, so um, so that is how we check collision masks. And what will happen now in the game, I would I should be able to, to, to go more closely towards um, a monster than um, I was able to do before. Um, so let's test that. So I've loaded up the game so you can see it. So as my monster comes past me now, I think you should be able to see that the bottom fins of the monster um, clip across my, uh, my main character's head and I do not die. Unfortunately, it's gone into a slow uh, motion coming back. There we go. So you can see it's just clipped my head and I am not uh, I haven't lost the life or gone back to the start. So that shows the collision masks uh, used effectively. Okay, so it's important you think about collision masks when you're um, creating your game. See you in the next lesson.